Gravity Falls, Owl House, and Amphibia, three amazing shows by Disney with many similarities ranging from similar art styles to creators working on multiple of the projects. Even all the show's main premises are fairly similar, with the main characters of each show leaving home and ending up in strange and unfamiliar places with odd caretakers or parental figures to stay with. All the shows even have interdimensional travel as key parts of their plot, especially Owl House and Amphibia, where both Luce and Anne are trapped in other dimensions and need to find a way home. But is that all, or is there a deeper connection? I believe that these shows are all in the same universe. And while this isn't a very unique idea, I haven't really seen it covered in great detail, so let's hop right into it. Now, these shows have plenty of easter eggs referring to each other, but which easter eggs are just fun nods to each other, and which ones have deeper implications? Easter eggs like the Sprig plushie, Dipper's Hat, King's Skull, and the Journal are probably just fun easter eggs. I'm also going to include the Calamity Box's appearance in Owl House under this category. Even though the Calamity Box is a key item that can travel between worlds, I don't really see any point in Amphibia's timeline where it could end up in the Owl House. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's move on to the evidence that does support my theory. Let's start with the theory that Eda is Grunkle Stan's ex-wife. Now, this may sound really random, especially since Stan only mentions having an ex-wife two times in Gravity Falls. Truth is, I've been divorced once, and slapped more times than I can remember. It goes, my ex-wife still misses me, but her aim is getting better! But thanks to other Gravity Falls media, like the books and DVD extras, we have more to work with. In the official Journal Free book, there is a page recapping the episode Dreamscapers, from Dipper's perspective. In Dreamscapers, they enter Stan's mind, and explore some of Stan's memories. The book shares some of the memories they saw off-screen. One memory in particular talks about Stan's ex-wife. Quote, Grunkle Stan getting married? Apparently he wedded a waitress named Marilyn Rosenstein in Las Vegas for 48 hours. But it turned out she was just trying to steal his car. A true scam artist, maybe she was the right one for him. Now, this gives us a little more information on Stan's ex-wife, the name being particularly important, but we'll get back to that later. Marilyn is then again mentioned in the Gravity Falls DVD extras commentary for the episode Land Before Swine. It features Stan talking about his ex-wife. Quote, I was actually married for less than a day. Vegas situation. We reached for the same slot machine handle, and it was love at first sight. Marilyn had hair like an airline stewardess, a neon pink shirt that said, over 30 and very flirty. Man, I was putty in her hands. You should have seen the way she threw dice. One time right at my head. Turns out she only married me to distract me while she stole my car and all my winnings. I guess her name was fake, and her hair was fake. But you know, the love was real. She really was the one that got away. Like literally, it was a proper getaway. She was chased by cop cars for a mile out of Vegas before ducking out a door and into a canyon and making off with my, all my loot. Sometimes I still think of her. The pale bingo hall skin, that one weirdly sharp tooth. Sorry, I'm getting nostalgic. Now, from this quote we learn quite a lot about Marilyn. We learn that she has pale skin, one weirdly sharp tooth, and weird hair, based on the fact that Stan thought it was fake. So far, this sounds like a pretty good description of Ida. Marin is also said to be wearing a shirt that says over 30 and very flirty. Now, while Ida never wears a shirt like this in the show, there is concept art of Ida wearing a shirt that says 30 and flirty, and she is also shown to have a mug that says 30 and flirty, which ties her back to this description. Even Marilyn's actions line up with Eda's fairly well. She is no stranger to stealing and tricking people. But how? Isn't this super rare? Let's just say that the Bonesboro Garden Club was robbed by us! And she regularly steals items from the human realm to sell at her market stand, so this would explain why she was in the human realm and Vegas to begin with. Eda being Marilyn could also explain Marilyn's strange escape. She ducks out a door into a canyon and makes off with the loot. Eda would easily be able to disappear into a canyon, she would just have to open a portal when she's out of sight in the canyon to make it seem like she disappeared. Now, this just leaves one issue. Marilyn and Eda are clearly different names. Now, Stan suspects that her name and hair are fake to cover our tracks. It's easy to see why he would assume her hair is fake. I mean, just look at it. And it makes sense she would use a fake name for this situation. But we have even more proof that Marilyn is Eda's cover name. In the Owl House episode, Yesterday's Lie, we see that Eda has been banned from a cafe in the human realm. And the woman working there refers to her as Marilyn. Oh, Marilyn? Yeah, she tried to pay for a latte with a live raccoon a couple months ago. This confirms that Eda uses the name Marilyn when exploring the human realm, making it highly likely that Stan's ex could be Eda. But Vegas may not be the only place Eda has visited in the Gravity Falls world. In the Gravity Falls Lost Legends book, there are two potential signs that Eda has been there. One is Eda's staff that can be seen in a pile of sticks, and the other is a wanted poster that looks very familiar. 
Now, that's all the evidence I could find between Owl House and Gravity Falls in lore, but there is still more to analyse outside the shows. Now, I believe Gravity Falls was retconned to include Owl House in its lore. Gravity Falls finished in 2016 and Owl House was released in 2020, but between this time is when I believe the retcon takes place. Alex Hirsch, the creator of Gravity Falls, has been in a relationship with Dana Terrence since approximately 2015, so when Dana started conceiving the idea for Owl House, Alex Hirsch would likely be fairly involved, and while Owl House is being conceived, Gravity Falls is getting a bunch of bonus canon in the form of books and DVDs. The first book referencing Owl House is Journal 3, which released in 2016. This is when Owl House is just being conceived, so that's why there is significantly less information in this reference. Then in 2018, the Gravity Falls Lost Legends book and DVDs release, Owl House's vision would be a lot clearer at this point, so the references can be a lot more detailed. Now, I don't think this is a strong point, but I do think the timing and release of these references shows the development of the idea for a connected universe, and just how connected these shows are behind the scenes. Now, while the connections between Owl House and Gravity Falls are fairly subtle, Amphibia's connection to Gravity Falls is far less cryptic. Amphibia has an entire episode dedicated to a Gravity Falls crossover. In the episode Wax Museum, we have Amphibia's main characters end up in a parallel version of the Mystery Shack, where they meet a frog version of Grunkle Stan. So while this is a crossover with Gravity Falls, it's not actually a direct connection between the worlds, since it's not actually Stan or the real Mystery Shack. All of this is still contained in Amphibia, but this doesn't mean it can't help us find a connection between both worlds. Now, the fact that there even is a Frog Grunkle Stan opens up the possibility of a Rick and Morty-styled multiverse, with there being different versions of the same person throughout the multiverse. But I'll let Frog Zeus ask the question. Looks like we just hit pay dirt, Frog Zeus. Do -do -do -do. Say, Mr. Pons, do you ever get the feeling that we exist simultaneously in multiple parallel universes, completely unaware of the other's very existence? You've been licking yourself again, Frog Zeus. <laughs> Caught me again, Mr. Pons. <laughs> Frog Seuss proposes that the same person can exist in multiple parallel universes. We as the audience have the knowledge of both shows, so we can confirm this. And if Frog Seuss's statement is true, then it would imply that the Gravity Falls universe exists in the same multiverse as Amphibia. In the crossover episode, there is a hidden message. The message is a cryptogram. It can be solved by moving each letter three letters down the alphabet. The message reads as, There is a Seuss in every dimension... Now, while this is likely just a fun joke, it did get me thinking, is there a Seuss in all three dimensions? That would certainly help prove that all three shows are in the same universe. Unfortunately not. The only other Seuss I could find was in Star vs. the Forces of Evil, so this doesn't help this specific theory. So I started thinking, is there other characters that appear on Earth, Amphibia, and the Boiling Isles? Yes, I believe I have found a character that appears in all three. And that character is... Hop Pop. I believe Hop Pop makes an appearance in all three dimensions. Now, Hop Pop obviously appears in Amphibia, so I don't really need to cover that. Hop Pop's next parallel version appears on Earth. In Amphibia's Season 1 final reunion, we see a flashback to the day the girls are trapped in Amphibia. Earlier that day, in class, they are dissecting frogs, and the frog Anne is dissecting looks extremely familiar to another frog we know. I believe this frog is Hop Hop's Earth parallel version. Now, I know this episode is still from Amphibia, not Gravity Falls, but it still happens on Earth where Gravity Falls would take place, so I'm willing to count this as Hop Hop's appearance in the Gravity Falls dimension. Now, the Boiling Isles was the hardest dimension to find parallel versions of characters in, so the one I found for Hop Pop is a bit of a stretch. Now Hop Pop doesn't directly appear in the Airhouse, but in the episode Escaping Expulsion, we can see a book called The Life Cycle of the Common Swamp Toad, and Hop Pop's face is plastered all over it. This book could be showing us that there is a parallel version of Hop Pop in the Boiling Isles. And if this is true, I believe that this helps reinforce the connection of all three shows existing in the same multiverse. The only other connection I could find between Amphibia and Gravity Falls is in Amphibia when on Earth, we can see some cases of merch from Gravity Falls showing up. This reinforces the idea that Amphibia's version of Earth is the same version of Earth that Gravity Falls is in. But now, let's move on to the connections between Owl House and Amphibia. Now, Amphibia dives more into the idea of being connected with Owl House. In the episode Day at the Aquarium, we start to learn more about the Calamity Box's purpose. The Newts used to explore other dimensions, which is more or less true. We learn this from Marcy and King Andreas' research. The book they are using to research the Calamity Box has some very interesting details. In the book, there appears to be a map of the dimensions that the Newts have visited. As you can probably guess where I'm going with this, one of the dimensions looks like it could be the Boiling Isles. The dimension in question has purple oceans just like the Boiling Isles' Boiling Sea. 
The land on the dimension also has a similar colour to the Boiling Isles' terrain. Now this colour matching isn't by itself enough proof to convince me that the Boiling Isles is the dimension on this map, but in a later episode of Amphibia, the gang meets a scientist who is opening portals using the energy the Calamity Box released, and one of the dimensions is a blurry picture of the Owl House. For me, this straight up confirms that Amphibia and Owl House are connected. This also makes me think that the Boiling Isles is the dimension in the book, since the portal indirectly came from the Calamity Box. I personally think that the portal in Amphibia is the strongest bit of evidence connecting these two shows, since it is literally a direct way to travel between them. But I do have one final point connecting Owl House and Amphibia, and it's a big one. There is an official crossover for Owl House and Amphibia, but how canon it is, is up for debate. In 2021, there was a Comic-Con livestream where the creators and voice cast for both shows got together and did a table read of a short script where Luce opens a portal to Amphibia and meets Anne. Now, while this is official, it's not an actual episode, and I don't think it's ever said to be canon, so it's hard to tell if this is just a fun meetup for the cast and crew, or an actual official event that happens in these shows. Now, I believe it's up to your personal belief if you want to consider this canon, but even if it's not, it just shows how tightly connected these shows are and how likely it is that they actually are in the same multiverse. Now, I have one more thing to cover when it comes to all three shows, and it's everyone's favourite demonic triangle, Bill. In Gravity Falls, the big bad of the show is Bill Cipher, a creature from another dimension. Bill has the power of a god. He can be watching from anywhere and anyone. His likeness is spread throughout Gravity Falls, but he also has managed to seep into other shows. I think his appearance in Amphibia is quite interesting. Bill makes his appearance in a book, Dr. P's Extraordinary Guide to Magic and Mystery. This book is extremely important since it's what causes Marcy to initially discover the Calamity Box. So whoever made this book knows about interdimensional travel, so it makes sense that they would know about Bill. Bill's other appearance in Owl House is a lot subtler. In the episode Intruder, King is explaining about demons of the Boiling Isles, and in the background of King's demon board we can see a picture of Bill. It's interesting that Bill appears on the board of demons since he's referred to as a dream demon. Maybe the people of the Boiling Isles know of Bill, and have catalogued him with the other demons. But with that final observation, that concludes my theory. Did I miss anything? Do you think I'm right, or do you think I'm completely full of it? Let me know in the comments below. And if you do want to see more theories, just let me know. If you have any ideas for theories, I would also love to hear them. And with that, remember to not subscribe since I've never done a theory like this and I mostly do gaming on my channel. But thank you for bearing with me. Bye!